traveling down Highway 90, the road most traveled, the strip of blacktop that knits together music and culture from Houston to Jacksonville. I'm John Morthland, a music writer based in Austin, Texas, and this time we're veering off the highway a little bit to stop in Laredo, Texas and talk about the music of the U.S.-Mexican border. The border in, uh, between Mexico and Texas is not really wholly American or wholly Mexican. It's sort of its own distinct place. A very clear third culture and tradition. The food is Tex-Mex and it draws from northern Mexico and Texas alike. In the same way, uh, border music draws from several sources, and it's both familiar sounding in some ways and really, really foreign in others. It's really interesting sound. You're listening right now to Grupo Fantasma. They come originally from Laredo, but they're now based in Austin, Texas. The, the music they play is typical border music in theory, but not really in sound. This group is typical in that its music does draw on a variety of different sources, but they're atypical because they draw on really different sources than, than most border groups. I'm Adrian Quetzal from Grupo Fantasma, and I'm from Laredo, Texas. We have a really hard time coming up with an exact label for what we do, but generally we just tell people we play Latin music, which is the easiest way to describe it because we cover pretty much the whole spectrum of different Latin musics. Um, If you really want to get detailed with it, you know, we sort of are what we call an Afro-Latin funk orchestra in that we play Afro-Caribbean music, Latin music, thrown in with a little bit of funk, and we are sort of holding on to this big band, like Latin orchestra thing. Yo, yo, mm. a rock is the international rock has seen. I link up with a bedroom better known as the group of Fantasma. Who oh, just wanted to get them out there? We're not looking for no quickie. We are the generation that grew up with hip hop, with rock and roll, with punk rock, but we are trying to keep our foot, you know, planted in this music that's been around for decades and decades before us. We just need a girl with dangerous with our vibes. She just have to be ready. I never really felt like I was growing up in the United States. I never really felt like I was growing up in Mexico. A good example of the way things are down there is you can walk into a convenience store in Laredo on the U.S. side, speak to somebody in Spanish, and they'll speak back to you in English. And I grew up thinking that was just the way things were. And it's much different from a lot of, say, Latinos who grew up in other parts of the country in that they always felt a little more... um, of a struggle, I'd say in Laredo, we never really felt something like that because we were, I'd say 90% of the population down there is Latino. So, you know, that of course goes into the music. Really, Grupo Fantasma's music is probably best described as pan-Hispanic. It mixes uh, all kinds of different sounds from Latin America. The dominant sound is probably salsa, but you can also hear some Carlos Santana, for example, in their guitar work, and Maceo Parker, who played in the James Brown Band and then Parliament Funkadelic. The specialty, though, is the cumbia. Uh, The cumbia is a traditional dance form from Colombia, that was continually updated there. And then in the 80s, it traveled up through Central America and into South Texas and really became popular all over Texas. Our music is, you know, one song will be one genre, another song will be another genre. But essentially, the band started out playing cumbia music, which was from Colombia. We were inspired by the what they call the golden age of Colombian cumbia, which is um, mostly big band orchestras from the 50s, 60s, and all the way into the 70s. And in addition to that, right before we started Grupo Fantasma, we used to be a funk band and um, with Latin percussion. And, you know, our primary influences were funk bands, anything like a James Brown, 
Sly and the Family Stone, and Earth, Wind, and Fire, War. Um, you know, generally most stuff is from the 50s, 60s, 70s era. Um, and then we all grew up listening to Public Enemy, to NWA, and a lot of the guys grew up listening to early heavy metal like Metallica and Megadeth and things like that. So I guess you just kind of throw all that into a blender. And some of the influences aren't so overt in terms of like we don't have a song that really sounds like Metallica or anything like that. But, um, you know, back in our heads, deep back in our heads, somebody, you know, hears something like that. Us ourselves used to think that Latin music and sort of more traditional musics that have been around that predate our generation were sort of old-timey music and the music of our parents. And of course, that's just a, sort of a rebellious teenager attitude. But as we sort of started to mature and grow up, Musically, we started realizing that there's a reason that this music is still around and still relevant. You know, it has a, a little more substance to it, a little more depth, and there's a tradition that was, you know, to most of these genres that's been created over decades and decades and decades. And like I said, there's a reason it's still around. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that comes out on MTV these days, or some of it to us, seems kind of disposable. And there's this music that's been around for decades and decades, and there's a reason. You know, we became sort of students and I guess devout students of most of these genres and really by reading up on it, really talking to a lot of elders who play this music and just kind of playing it over and over, studying it. You know, we're the first ones to say we didn't grow up playing in Latin bands all our life. We played what every other teenager played in a garage band. But, you know, we came around to really appreciate this stuff and that's sort of our mission is to present this stuff to people who might not be familiar with it. Latin music, just like Grupo Fantasma, is growing increasingly more varied all the time. The traditional forms, no doubt, will hold on in the future, but a band like Grupo Fantasma is probably the shape of things to come. We hear a lot today about the fact that America will become increasingly Hispanic, that People of Mexican descent will be the largest minority in, in a decade or so. And somebody like Grupo Fantasma is sort of riding that wave and sort of creating it. Coming to see us play is just coming out to have a good time. And that's kind of what the cumbia bands that we remember seeing on the other side of the border in Nuevo Laredo would play all night long. And regardless of whether you knew what they were talking about or you could even understand them, most of the time the sound systems were so terrible that you couldn't even hear what they were saying. You would just dance all night long and party, basically. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I'm Austin music writer John Morthland for Arts Edge, a program of the Education Department of the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts.